Hi everyone, this is Deb Farrell at Color Color Everywhere, and I'm just coming on for a short time to um, work just a little bit on my Christmas ornaments that I'm uh, doing a little series on. They're all white, so it makes them a little difficult to see, but I think I've got it set to where you can at least see it a little bit on here and see some of the progress. None of these are totally done yet. Um, except maybe the, the bear. I haven't quite decided if I want anything else on him. But as you can see, they're all white and uh, there'll be a, a, at least 12 different ones over the course of the year until next Christmas, Christmas of, two, tw uh, Christmas of 21. And um, I'm just sort of um, slowly working on them as I have time. But I am trying to every month at least get get the month that month's cut out and started. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are just made out of regular craft felt. Uh, it's not special wool felt or anything like that. It's just the regular craft squares that you can buy at the uh, Joann's or someplace, you know, Walmart, wherever. And um, these this actually is. Um, a yardage piece. It's not a squ not squares because I just happen to have that. So, like I said, th this is the little bear, and you can see he has. You can see it better down here. He has a bow. He has um, some little flowers in his hair, which I have some more. I think I'm going to add to his or in his hair by his ear. I think I have some more. I'm going to add to that. I have um, I have some really small white flowers. It's a sequin, but it's shaped like a flower. I have a few of those <coughs> that were from a wedding dress I just altered. I have quite a few little um, little beads that came, all these little beads here came from that wedding dress. So I'm going to use those along with my other beads that I have. And then here's the little mouse. I haven't done very much on him this month, um, but you can see, <coughs> excuse me, let me get a drink. You can see that it's a little mouse standing behind a candy cane. And I started decorating the candy cane with some sequins. And that's, um, I've done all the blanket stitch. Everything is blanket stitched all around all these little pieces. They're all blanket stitched on in layers. And then the backs of them are just solid. So that's how the back looks on each one. And then we've got the little cat in the, in the sock. He has a few things done to him. And um, then now, right, <coughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what that's all about. Right now I'm working on this wreath. So this is January, February, March, April, and here it is May. So I have to, I haven't cut the May one out yet. I haven't decided what it's going to be, but it might be, I think I'm going to do, let me see if I can find it. Um, let's see what patterns I already have drawn out. And if you weren't from if you weren't here from the beginning, these came from a uh, book, an old book, and I gave the information in the first um, part of the series. I might do the rocking horse next. I don't know, either the rocking horse. I have a skate ready to do. I have a Christmas tree ready to do. And the Christmas tree is kind of like the um, wreath. It has little layers of the pieces on there. And then I have a candle. Here's part of the rocky horse. So, so I have some already cut out. So these will be the next ones that I do. And then there'll be some more um, that um, I haven't even drawn out yet from the book. So, but today I'm just going to work a little bit on the wreath. Now I've started it and uh, it has, the front has three layers and I'm using pearl cotton, um, number 12 pearl cotton. So it's a, it's a nice size to use, but it gives a nice uh, look. It shows up and sometimes I'm actually using embroidery, uh, machine embroidery thread. When I'm putting on beads, I use the machine embroidery thread with, uh, a beading needle because I don't have any white beading thread. So that's just what I had. So this is actually, um, if you peek in the corner here, you could see this is 
this is actually three layers, these three layers. And then this will be attached to a solid back and it will get stuffed just like the other pieces did. Although this one is, it's pretty thick without being stuffed. So I have to think about that. Do I want to stuff it or not? I think it deserves a tiny bit of stuffing, but it's not going to take much at all because this is three layers. So it's, it's pretty puffy already. And then I have a piece of lace I just had in my hand. Where did it go? Over here somewhere, unless I dropped it. That's always the way it is. Um, where in the world is this it? Yeah, I think this is it. I'm going to put this on here so that it kind of works its way over it. Yeah, see, now that's getting hard to see again. I don't know what happened. Let me see. That's the, one, that's the thing about doing this white. There. It's very hard to see on the screen. I think I put these back. That will help the adjustment. It helps a little bit. But anyway, so that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going, I've done these three layers, and I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and sew this piece of lace on before I put this together. And um, that way it'll it'll just be like a little applique that I've put on there. I just thought that looked kind of festive, kind of like that. So I'm going to get the biggest part in place first. And then I'll just stitch it in there. And I can I can put the knot in the back because it doesn't matter. It's not going to show because there'll be another layer on the back of it. So I just knotted my thread, and all I'm going to do is go through here and and sort of tack this down. I can find the place that's the best, and I can do this. Hi, Janet and Mrs. Gigi. Yes, they are made of felt, and. Um, uh, I've used this pattern many times in the past, oh, since the 70s. And I don't have my book right here. Or I would show it to you. I don't even know where it is right now. But um, um, Sandra Foos Foosberry, I, I think is the way you say it, Foosberry, she put out several uh, books with little patterns like this in it, along with a bunch of other patterns too. Um, Scrap Saver Stitchery is what they're called. You're in bed now. <laughs> oh. Well, Janet, you know, you give so much of yourself. That makes a person tired. You give a lot. So you deserve some rest. So take you a nap. Take you a nap and just let me put you to sleep. I don't have the fancy voice like you do, but maybe it will put you to sleep anyway because I go on and on and on, you know. <laughs> Oh, I can't, I miss your streams because I'm, that's when I go to the chiropractor and sometimes I turn it on and listen while I'm driving and sometimes I just need to pay more attention to my driving so I don't, it just depends on what the traffic is and what have you, but I always have to go back and I very seldom get to see it live because of that, so I always try to go back and, and watch later. See, I, I wish there was a better way for me to um, let you see this because I know it's really light. I'm going to zoom out a little, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got this frog in my throat. Maybe that'll be better if I just hold it up a little bit. Oh, thanks, Janet. I have fun making them. I've been doing quite a few doilies here lately. Uh, sh they'll show up in the sale, I'm sure. Maybe even today. Who knows? Who knows? But uh, yeah, I've been, and I just started working on some more needle books. I really enjoyed working on those. So those are the things I usually do when I'm. Uh, not in the craft room when I'm upstairs 
in the evening with my husband and we're watching TV or whatever, listening to a book or something. And I just had this stuff sitting up by my chair. So it's at hand and it's little things that I don't have to spread out quite as much. So I can, I can do all that handwork while I'm sitting there. Sometimes I miss um, that kind of creating. You know, I, I do a lot of paper and I haven't done a lot of jewelry in a while. I kind of miss that. I haven't done any metal stuff in a while. I miss that. But I've been enjoying doing so paper so much that, um, you know, you can only do so many things. <laughs> Yeah, going to the chiropractor, it is helpful. I, I go, usually I go on every Monday. Sometimes I go every two weeks, but usually I need it once a week. And he straightens, straightens me out a little bit and helps me out. I really appreciate him. I don't have the kind of chiropractor, well, not for me anyway, who pops and cracks and all this kind of stuff. He's very gentle and um, it does help me quite a bit especially when I've been sitting at a work desk a lot, you know, crafting for hours and um, all that kind of thing. You get stiff. You get stiff. But that's life. So oh, I'm so glad that, uh, I know I've said this before, but I've been working on these wedding, wedding alterations and the wedding was this past Saturday. So I'm, I'm glad that that's, that's through. <laughs> I hope there's not another one anytime soon. <laughs> no, Janet, I'm really not a master. I'm not a master hardly of any of them. I, If there's anything that I'm a master of, it might be sewing because I've done it for so many years and I've done a lot of specialized things. So I feel very confident with sewing. I feel like I can pretty much do anything with sewing. I mean, you know, I've made wedding dresses. I've made suits. And then everything in between, fancy Western shirts, you know, all of that. And um, I always go back to sewing. Always. It was the first thing. When I was 11 years old, I started making my own clothes. And it was the first thing that I really started creating with. And um, it's always stuck with me and I always go back to it. And it's always been the, a most, the most useful craft that I have ever learned because you can absolutely take a flat piece of fabric and make a hundred different things out of it and they're all useful, you know. So I, I enjoy making things that are use, useful. And I like making things that aren't too, the things that are just useful for looking at. <laughs> I was watching Mrs. Gigi, uh, when was that? I think it was one evening and uh, she was putting together a new um, journal so I was kind of watching that in the background about half asleep but um, I still enjoyed it you know <laughs> sometimes that's when I get to watch is in the evening when everybody's gone to bed and I'm still I still haven't given it up yet and up by myself watching with the headset on you know <laughs> But um, it's fun to watch what other people are doing. And then you get ideas. It may not be what they're doing, but it, for me anyway, it gives me lots of ideas. Lots of ideas for other things. I'm kind of watching the clock because I think um, Keisha's coming on to sell in a little bit. So I'm just coming on for a little bit to do this and then I guess I'll go visit with her while I'm working on things in the background. I think this is going to be pretty. I'll put some more beads on it. Thread's getting fuzzy. I'm going to clip it on the end before it starts tangling.
Now there's net in the middle of, oh, come on. There's, there's net in the middle of here, so I don't really have to stitch. I, I might, but I don't think I will. I have to stitch all the way through there. I can just jump up to the next. Actually, I think I need to cut this free. Or maybe it already is. Oh, it already is. It's hard for me to see, even sitting right here in front of this stuff. Everything just blends. It's almost as bad as working on, on solid black. That's got to be the hardest thing to work on. And, you know, I get inspired by everyone. I, I It hurts my feelings to hear someone say, I can't do anything right, or I'm not good enough, or whatever, because I want to see what everyone's doing and what whatever level they're at. You know, it doesn't mean that someone else is better or does something better than them. It's just that they may not have as much experience yet. But um, I like to see what everyone's doing and what their ideas are. Because, it, you know, sometimes the best ideas come from inexperienced people. <laughs> and I want all the good ideas. <laughs> but I'm not in my thread that I can't get out. But it's so tiny, I think I'll, I think it'll still work. So Janet, you're pretty hooked on the sewing, right? You seem to be doing that more than anything these days. You're liking that pretty well. I've always liked it, and I've always liked doing handwork. I like to um, knit. I don't knit as much as I used to because it, it to knit very long, it really it hurts me, so I it hurts my neck and my shoulders and my hands and you know just about everything. But um, I still do it occasionally. But about the only thing I knit anymore is socks, and I haven't done any of that in a while. So I'm even kind of wanting to knit some socks. But I think that's going to wait till gets gets cold again. It's not that warm here yet, but it's getting there. It's trying to get there, and I'm going to try to thread this needle again. I'm using a rather large needle, long needle, and uh, the eye is long, but it's not the hole's not really big. But I need something to use this um, pearl cotton with, and. I use a long needle because it's easier for me to grasp. I can hardly use a short needle anymore because my it cramps my hands too much, you know. So so you just find out what else what you can do otherwise. Sock pattern and a little bamboo needles. Ah, are you you have the uh, you're going to do four point needles? I like doing that. Yeah, I really like making socks. The only thing is, I'm I really don't like making the cuffs. <laughs> I like to make the foot part, but not the cuffs. So I'll start out making some that you know they're supposed to have, not be more like anklets instead of what is the crew socks or whatever. I don't know what the right word is, uh, but instead of making the long cuffs, I end up making the short ones because I don't have the patience. <laughs> oh, sometimes I do, but that happens more often than not. And I kind of like making them from the toe up instead of the toe down. I could do it either way, but I think I kind of like toe starting with the toe first. And I don't know, maybe it's because of the gratification of seeing that toe done and the heel done. But I think they're fun to make. And they don't cost it. You could buy nice yarn and not spend a whole lot making socks. So I like that too. Hmm. Trying to get this so I could fit the whole piece on there. It's a little bit big. There, that'll work. Well, hi, Beth. How are you today? I'm just on here for a little while. Um, just to uh, catch a little bit up on my 
or catch up a little bit on my ornaments because I'm kind of I kind of got behind last month doing all that sewing stuff. And now I'm trying to catch up a little bit. Hope everybody's doing well today. Oh, crochet blanket. See, I don't crochet blankets too much. I do every once in a great while. I don't really crochet with yarn much anymore. Um, same reason as the knitting. I used to, but um, the last two afghans I made were the last two, I think. And now I mostly just do thread. And I have so much thread that, you know, I don't have to go out and buy anything. <laughs> I guess I got plenty of it. So I'm just using what I got, <laughs> trying to most of the time. But uh, these little ornaments are fun to make, and, and I needed something for my tree. We just changed colors. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on. I think I'm still reacting from being at the farm over the weekend at this wedding. All that newly mown grass and everything. It was beautiful. But I've been sneezing ever since. And I forgot what I was saying now. Oh, so anyway, I'm trying to I'm trying to catch up and um, using up my crochet thread and I'm finish. I got two two journals. I'm finishing up and getting ready to start another one. And that's kind of been on the side burner a little bit. <clears throat> so there's lots of things to work on. Never, never a short thing to work on. And I need to do some sorting. I want to do some cleaning out and sorting. And that's always on the back burner. <laughs> Who wants to do that? <laughs> oh, thanks. That was pretty. That was pretty calm. Usually, I sneeze like six to ten times. <laughs> I think my record is seventeen. <laughs> oh. and then you feel like your brains are blown out after that. You don't. You can't even. You know, do anything. <laughs> Let's see, what else do I know? Thanks. Thanks, Beth. No, they're hard to see. They're coming along. See those? They're coming along. I At first I thought, okay, now I got to do one of these each month because I started, uh, when did I start? This is the third one. So I started late. I started a month late. So I did January and February. And then I was, you know, I had myself, my mind was in the schedule. Like, okay, I got to do one of these every month. Every month I got to finish one. And then I got to thinking, why am I putting myself on this pressure? I don't have to finish one every month. I just want them all to be done at the end of the year. So, yeah. So I got rid of the pressure. Now I'm enjoying it more. Oh, chicken and dumplings. I've got two, um, I don't know what to call them, two pieces of uh, hog jowl. Does anybody, do y'all know what hog jowl is? In the refrigerator, and I'm going to cook them on the smoker. And it is so good. It's so rich, you could hardly need it. But I got that to do, plus I got a big tray of chicken I'm going to put on the same time. That way I could just, you know, freeze, freeze it after it's cooked and don't have to worry about fixing something for a couple of days or something. So I might do that tomorrow because I don't know when I'm going to have another free day. Beth, you know what? I, let me look around right quick and see if this book is right here. Um, I the patterns are from and I don't see it. The patterns are from a book by um, Sandra. Who's. Foosberg, Foosberger, Foos, that right? Foosberg, I think. And it's an old book. It's from the 70s, uh, late 70s, I think. And um, I'm, I believe it's still a copyright thing, so I can't sell the patterns. 
but the books are still available. I looked them up and they're still av available. You can get them for about $5 and there are multiple patterns, other kinds of patterns in there too that are really fun. And uh, it has uh, a number of, I don't know, let's see, I'm gonna say like maybe 24, maybe somewhere between 15 and 24 patterns for different things. So there's like a Santa, and they're all Christmas related in this set. And um, they're, uh, you, can, you can make them into ornaments or um, you can sew them, you know, you like you could make the fronts and instead of stuffing them, you just, you can sew that on a quilt or, or a hanging or anything like that. And then she has lots of other uh, things in there you can do like really cute little hand mitten washcloths that are like a cat and a dog and uh, placemats and just different things like that, baby things and um, just all kinds of stuff. And the name of the book is um, Scrap Savers Stitchery, I believe is the name of it. It's actually in the in the first, I show it in my first, um, the first uh, video of the series. I can't see today. Oxtails. Mm. I don't think I've ever had oxtails. Boy, chicken and dumpling sounds really good. I haven't made any of those in a long time. I like the fat, fluffy dumplings, and my husband likes the flat, flat, stiffer ones. So I try to make them like that, so for the kind he likes. Most of the time when I make them, such a poor cook. I don't know how the poor man survives. Well, we go out and eat a lot. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So I'm almost around here. And all I'm really doing, this is just a piece of, uh, let me pull this piece up. Maybe you could tell on it. You see, I uh, can't tell very well, but in the middle, there's like a fine netting. And, and like right here, there's also some fine netting and that kind of holds it all together. And you don't have to stitch uh, real close around the edge, but you know, enough so that it doesn't come up. And that's all I'm doing. I'm just stitching around the edge of the pattern or of the uh, design. There, I missed that one. So I gotta go back and do him. And that's the same way it's stitched on most wedding dresses, unless it's a solid piece. But they'll just take pieces and applique them on around the edges. And you just use thread that it's real easy to hide the thread because um, there's so many different threads in there. And you can't really see the thread if, you know, if you match the color. Or you can use a clear thread, which I don't really like to use. Oxtails. Do you make oxtails like sort of like neck bones? Would you use the same process? Sometimes we have neck bones and kraut, which I, I'm not crazy about kraut, but I love the neck bones cooked with a kraut. I'll eat the kraut. But I gotta have mashed potatoes if I'm gonna have if I'm gonna have sauerkraut, I gotta have mashed potatoes with it. <laughs> but I can't eat it. Cream of chicken soup. Oh. Oh, tea cozy. Yeah. I have um, crochet books that are from the, the 50s, 1950s. I have a big stack of them. And it's when they started putting out the, the, the um, colored crochet thread. And um, and the books were well. They might have had colored crochet thread before that, but I, you know, I think they, I think they, I don't think they had that much of it before then. But um, I think it's when the books started coming out in color because the ones before that, most of them aren't in color. But these have like flowers and flower doilies and stuff like that. And um, I've had them for quite a long time. I I just came by them by accident. I was I was doing some cleaning for a lady that when I was when I was young and we lived in Florida, we lived in a trailer park, 
and she needed someone to clean out some of her rental trailers. So me and my girlfriend, we did that. And um, in the top of one of the closets, there was a, a stack of these books. And I, and I was crocheting always, I've always, I've been crocheting since I was like 12. So I'm, you know, I perked up right away and I thought, well, I wonder if we should try to get these to these people. And the owner said, no, they're deadbeats. <laughs> they didn't even pay their bill. I don't know where to find them or I would. She said, don't worry about it. just keep them or throw them away, either one. So I was like ecstatic to get those. And I've been, I've been using them since the seventies. So, you know, if you like that old fashioned kind of stuff and there it is. And then someone gave me some more, someone's aunt. People are always giving me things when they're older female relatives pass on. They don't know what to do with them, you know? So I get a lot of old jewelry and sewing stuff and what have you. Yeah, I'm usually pretty happy to get it. I've done so many things over the years that I have a little bit of everything and know how to do a little bit of everything. And sometimes I really, I've said this before, oh, thanks, Janet. I don't know if you could tell what they are. Let me see if I can get it up here close enough. They're, see, it's a it's supposed to be a rose. This one. It's supposed to be a little rose on there with polka dots. The little girl that did them, she was so excited. She had to take pictures and all this kind of stuff. I thought, oh, well, okay, whatever you want to do. But that, I did that on my birthday, so it was pretty fun. I know I didn't finish what I was saying, but I don't remember what it was, so it must not have been too important. <laughs> Almost done with this little piece. It doesn't take that long. The beads take longer. The beads take a lot longer. As you know, they're little and fiddly and all that, but they do make a big they do that put on a big show, so. <laughs> Gonna finish this here and just saw the red. <laughs> Well, she's such a cute little girl. Her name is Anna. Her real name is um, Wynn, but her American name is Anna. She's Vietnamese. And she's just as sweet as she could be. And a couple times ago, I said, let's just do something plain. Let's just put solid color this time and not do anything fancy. Oh, but don't you want some, don't you want some glitter or something on there? So finally, I'll let her do one nail. And I said, next time I come in, I'm going to have a challenge for you. <laughs> so the last time I was in there, I, I took in a, in a picture of, of what I thought I would like. And she, she did that really well. And uh, so this time I, I took a picture similar to this in there. And she did a good job with that. So it's pretty fun. Might as well have fun, you know. She said, um, am I going to add color to the to these? No, they're going to all be white, all white, white beads and you know, all white stuff. Because my tree, we got a, we got new ornaments last year and there's not enough of them on there. And um, our tree ornaments are white and like a I call it navy blue. I think they call it royal blue or something. But um the blue is pretty, but it doesn't really show up and it has all white lights. So I'm just going to add some more white ornaments. And I thought of this and I thought this would be a good project to um, to make some new ornaments for the tree. So there you go. I've never made them all white before. Usually I do make colors. I, I have sold a lot of these in, uh, in colors. 
And there's another one that I haven't drawn out yet that's a gingerbread man. He's really cute. So I'll be doing one of him too. And I can't remember what else I have. I, I think that, uh, there's a Santa. Uh, trying to remember which ones I decided to do. I know there's a little house. I don't think I'll do the house. I'm not positive. But anyway, there's several others. I think I might do the skate next. See, I'm using this humongous needle. Look how long it is. How long is that? Two inches. Two inches long. But it gives me a good, a good grip. So that's why I've been using it. Okay, ladies. Well, I'm going to go. <laughs> I think it'll be pretty, Janet. Um, so the next thing I'll do is stitch this on together on the edges. And then I'll go in and stuff just a tiny bit of fiber in there and then stitch the center. And um, then I can go back and bead it or whatever. I'm probably, I think I'm going to use some of these if I have enough. I'm going to use some of these little flowers because they're pretty. And put a shiny bead in the center maybe. Or look and see what else I have that's white. So thanks for stopping by. I didn't plan on being here very long. I think um, in a few minutes, I think Keisha's going to start. Uh, started up and I wanted to go over there and she's going to be doing a little bit of selling today I think which is different so um, I'm glad y'all stopped by uh, come back anytime I enjoy seeing you all here oh, okay Beth I will I'll try to do that I always forget you know once I'm done I'm, it's out of my brain so but I'll try to remember to do that because that's a nice thing that you let us do I appreciate that so thanks everyone for coming and um, hope to see you next time and I'll see you around. Okay, bye-bye.